We had an incident at Hurley where I wanted something to happen with the WSL and our team wasn't really rallying about it. And we had a meeting right downstairs here with my sons and the head of marketing. And I kind of threw a tantrum. I said, I want this to happen right now. And they're like, okay, well, we'll do it uh, maybe tomorrow. We're gonna think about it. I said, right now, pull the phone out of your pocket and make the deal. And then I felt really bad and they were looking at me like he's a crazy man. What do brands look for when deciding to sponsor a surfer? When uh, we had Hurley, we only looked for nice people that had really good vibes and could make us feel happy to have them around. I had a Sunday school teacher in seventh grade who said, I'm gonna teach you guys about joy today. You know what joy is? Yeah. Yeah, that's different than like, I got a new surfboard. Mm -hmm. And she said, there's three things. There's Jesus, there's others, and there's you, in that order. So take the first letter of each of those words, that's how you're gonna have joy your whole life. It's super easy. Ready. Oh, that's like the chalkboard word thing. Hi, I'm Luke Carboni. I'm Maxims Carboni. And we're the Carboni Brothers. Today we're talking to the founder of Hurley. So you have been in the surf industry for over 50 years and you are regarded as one of the most influential people in the surfing world, especially with the youth. So we'd like to start there. Why do you care so much about the youth? Well, the kids are our future, right? Because they laugh a lot. Like an average six-year-old lasts 300 times a day, an average adult lasts six. That's kind of a problem for me. Kids are very curious. They want to learn everything, right? And as we get to be adults, we stop being curious. And I think it's a little sad because there's a lot to learn in life. But I love seeing the potential. You guys seem amazing. I, after we surfed, walking back with my brother, I'm like, that kid was so cool. Like, he's going places, you know? I like to imagine what you'll be like in the future. And if I could ever do anything to help somebody be better in the future, that's good for me. Yeah. How many kids do you have? And do they surf or work with you? Yes, I have three children. I have 11 grandchildren. So it can be really nice working with your family. And it can also be hard because I don't know if you guys remember when you learn how to do something like ride a bike, after you learn how to ride it, you don't really want your parents holding the handlebar, yeah. but the parents don't want you to get hurt, so they want to help. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that can be difficult, but we've navigated through it pretty good. One time, uh, one time we had an incident at Hurley where I wanted something to happen with the WSL and our team wasn't really rallying about it. And we had a meeting right downstairs here with my sons and the head of marketing. And I kind of threw a tantrum. I said, I want this to happen right now. And they're like, okay, well, we'll do it uh, maybe tomorrow. We're gonna think about it. I said, right now, pull the phone out of your pocket and make the deal. And then I felt really bad and they were looking at me like he's a crazy man. And then they were walking out and I felt so horrible and so did they. And I said, God, how do I handle this? I don't ever want to have this kind of a meeting again. And God said to me, clear as day, if they ask you a question, you should answer it. And if they don't, just zip it up, buddy. So learning, we're all learning. But yeah, I love working with my family. Yeah. So now more about work. You've made a huge impact on surfing. And we hear that your surf secret is you practice the golden rule, you surround yourself with great people, and you look for magic. Can you explain a little bit more on that? For me, the best thing in business is the golden rule and the smartest thing. But but just in life in general, none of us know if we're going to make it, you know, five more minutes or five more days or 50 more years. So why not be kind to everybody? And I have more fun surfing. Like I have more fun if you catch a wave than if I catch a wave. Because after surfing for all these years, 50 years, I basically do the same thing on every wave and I'm kind of boring to watch. So I'd rather I'd rather help somebody get a good one. That's really fun for me. It just seems everywhere I go, best, funnest people to be around are the kindest ones that practice the golden rule, whether they know they're practicing it or not. You know, uh, It's just a really good way to live, I think. I had a Sunday school teacher in seventh grade who said, I'm gonna teach you guys about joy today. You know what joy is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's different than like, I got a new surfboard. Mm -hmm. And she said, uh, okay. There's three things. There's Jesus, there's others, and there's you, in that order. So take the first letter of each of those words, that's how you're gonna have joy your whole life. It's super easy. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool, like, analogy. Can you tell us more about your new venture, Can Dewey, and what can we get excited about? So we partnered up with John Florence, mm -hmm. and we started a company, and the company has two brands, Florence and Simple Shoes. Um, we don't have simple anymore because we just partner with somebody to handle it for us and we're gonna help them. And we wanna focus on Florence 100% because John is like the coolest, funnest guy ever and does the right things for the right reasons. He loves his family, he loves his community and he really loves kids. So 
we're just trying to do something cool. You know, there's not many surf industry companies that are owned by surfers anymore. There's never been a better time to start a new brand or have a company and do some good in the world, hopefully. Yeah, I really like the product. Like, I'm wearing it right now. Thanks, I saw that. Yes, it's really good. I got those trunks. I got a barrel in those trunks, May 8th. G-Land. Really good one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I bought the uh the rash guard. The rash guard. Thank like, you. I really like it. Like oh, it cool. keeps you warm. Yeah. Did you get done with the hood or no? Yeah, I did. I wear that thing religiously in Hawaii every day, in Indonesia every day, in Fiji every day. Never surf without it. So on to surfing. We were surfing at Fifty Sixth Street this morning. Yeah. And um, you were there too. Yep. How often do you surf and what type of board do you usually ride? Yeah, I ride a lot of different boards. I try to surf every day, but I don't. I'm not, you know, if I don't surf, I'm not bummed. I've surfed some of the best waves around the world numerous times. So I'm really sensitive to fun out in the water. It's not fun where the waves are better. I could care less. I really enjoy that about surfing the most, I think. And so the boards I ride, I get a lot of boards from Wade Takoro in Hawaii, John Paisel. Al Merrick, son Britt Merrick now. I get a lot of his boards. Uh, I was writing a Mike Wu this morning who's working with Kelly Slater on some pretty interesting new board designs. Mike lives in Bali. The one I had this morning is called a Great White. It was designed after a Great White Shark. So the outline really does look like a Great White Shark with the tail cut off. And, cool. and even the rocker, the bottom curve, is designed off the belly rocker of a Great White. How does this surf nice? It's unbelievable. I've been back from G-Land about 40 days now, and I've ridden it every single day. And I get on my other boards for like an hour, and I'm like, nah. I mean, the, the gray whites are super fast. Yeah. That's got to be fast as well. Yeah. Yeah. When and how did you start Bobby G Surf Camp? Oh, I wish that was my camp, but it's not. It Actually, I don't wish it was. It'd be a lot of work. But it's a guy named Bobby Radiasa, who was a Balinese guy that surfed, and he met a guy named Jerry Lopez, and a couple other guys, and uh, he started this camp on the eastern tip of Java. It's a national game reserve there. Like, there's rangers there, and they keep an eye on things, and nobody was allowed to build anything there. But with the federal government there, he made deals and figured out how to build things. So sometimes there's just been tents on the ground. Uh, sometimes there's been little shacks. Sometimes there's been two stories, and Bobby's still around. He's the greatest guy ever. I've been going there since 1986. And there's snakes, there's leopards, there's monkeys, there's tigers, there's wild boar, like this far away from you, uh, there's deer. It's a lot of fun. It's a jungle. It's a jungle. <laughs> You're the only one uh, that goes in a cage at night. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the middle a lot of, of snakes. Nation. It's so cool. So you it's see really, the waves? It's covered by trees and stuff. So no, you have to walk down a path to check the waves out because they used to put the, um, the accommodations right on the beach. In the year 2000 or 2001, they had a tsunami there. I had a lot of friends that were staying there. Yeah. Luckily, I missed the tsunami. But it came in and just washed everybody up in trees and broke people's arms and stuff. And they're like, hmm, maybe we should move it back a little bit, you know? Surfers are always looking for sponsors. What do brands look for when deciding to sponsor a surfer? I don't know what other people look for, but when, when uh, we had Hurley, we only looked for nice people that had really good vibes and could make us feel happy to have them around. They had to surf good, of course, but um, we never went for like just the best athlete. Um, there was just some people we wouldn't even sponsor for free and, and you know, people that didn't promote the company values, let's say. Yeah, it's great to definitely sponsor and hire people for their personality. Yeah, yeah. They just turn out like enjoyable to work around, you know? You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we, you know, selfishly want to make our day better every day. Mm -hmm. So the more, magic you around, the better your day is usually. So what three pieces of advice can you give to parents for upcoming surfers? Well, I'd say number one, encourage your kids to have fun. Really enjoy surfing because, you know, these years from you guys till you're like 20 and even to my age, they just go so fast. And you don't want to miss out on your childhood by trying to be the guy, you know, and be coached all the time and you know, have your parents yell at you if you sat in the wrong spot or, you know, you waxed your board wrong. And, you know, we've seen all that stuff. And it's kind of sad for me, really, because when you're a kid, you should be a kid. And you should surf your brains out if you want to. And if you, But it's hard as a parent to not do that, just so you know, because with my kids, I'd be like, I told you to sit over there. And then you sat over there. What were you thinking? You're like, oh, why did I just say that? Now on to life. How should young adults Good transition. approach success? <laughs> Thank you. What is the definition of success? Well, I'm sure everybody has a different definition of success. My definition is 
to be to have a happy family that you love and you know if you're not fortunate enough to have kids or a wife or a husband or whatever uh, you know just a good group of friends that love you and uh, you you usually can't have very many in life so if you have a few you're doing pretty well but that's the thing to strive for really I think because you know you'll hear this from every athlete pretty much they win a world title they win a Super Bowl whatever and they're like and then the next day they're depressed yeah. for quite some time. It happens with Super Bowl winners all the time. You know, the guy's got like $100 million in the bank and they just won the Super Bowl and MVP and they're like bummed. I think success is if you can realize A, that you were created, B, why you were created, and C, try to find your destiny. It's like just trying different things and figuring out which way you're supposed to go, you know, and what you're good at and what you're not and what you were made for. You know, everyone's made for something different. I'm definitely not made to be a brain surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who do you look up to? Probably not normal people that you would think, but uh, Rob Machado is a guy I looked up to for a long time. We worked with him for a long, long time, and I really learned from him a lot. He used to stay with us in Hawaii on how to be kinder and not in such a hurry, because I'm kind of always in a hurry, you know, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. But if you go on to too many next things, you never experience the thing you're doing, you know? And so I learned that from Rob, but I learned from everybody. Like I was looking up to you this morning because you had such a good head on your shoulders in the lineup. I, there's everybody you can learn from, you know, and, and we're all very imperfect. So if you're really looking up to that person, they're going to fail eventually. You know, we all do. We all have our time, you know. Eventually, I'm going to fail in business or whatever. Eventually, so-and-so is not going to be the best surfer. And But it's nice to believe in people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What are two great books you recommend for young adults? That's a good question. I'm reading one right now because I know some friends that have had concussions surfing like backdoor and stuff. And it's called uh, the Concussion Repair Manual. And it's not only about concussions, it's about, because surfing is now a contact sport. Everybody's doing such high airs and hitting their head and stuff. But it's also about Alzheimer's and it's also about autism. And it's also about mental illness and depression. And it's just so fascinating how your brain works. Like I, I can't get enough of it. Like, oh, there's another one called Breathe. You guys should read this book. It's mind boggling. Because I couldn't breathe properly like that. And then I asked my friend, I'm like, I'm reading the book. I just, I can't. He's like, okay, when you're paddling out, do you ever get winded? And I said, yeah, I, I can't, I can't get enough air. And he said, oh, we well, are doing it wrong. Here's, here's my tip for you then. Just blow out the whole time you're paddling. He goes, you'll breathe in through your nose. Don't worry. You have to, yeah. your body will make you do it. And, yeah. it. and you never get tired. Yeah. It's weird. It's like a magic trick. Breathe through your nose, out your mouth. And the health effects are dramatic. It's so interesting. Lots of studies. Just called Breathe. It's a yellow book. Yeah. And um, do you breathe through your nose? It sends the oxygen and the nitrogen through your body faster. And it stimulates. What, are you a doctor or something? Well, my dad, breathing science. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So he's taught me a couple tips. And breathing through your nose is... Um, key even though it feels like breathing through your mouth can you can take in more oxygen yeah it's your nose because it just yeah. filters the air so much better the difference is insane yeah, yeah it changes the chemical composition of what you're taking in i i understand i don't know i'm no expert but yeah they did some studies at stanford university like they taped off a guy's nose for two weeks and see how his health was terrible just yeah. breathing through his mouth terrible blood pressure up heart rate everything and they did the opposite and yeah it was pretty interesting Last question, what advice can you give young adults trying to find their path? Well, when you're trying to find your path, it's confusing. My grandson's 19, he was just over here, and we were talking about this. You have to try lots of things. You know, he works at a restaurant right now, he does some other stuff, he's like the nicest guy you've ever met, really sharp. But it's confusing, you know? Does he want to try to be a pro football player? Does he want to try to be a pro surfer? Does he want to go into sales? He was saying he might want to go into real estate. You don't know, so you just have to start doing things. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a janitor. I worked in a factory. I was a busboy. I worked in a surf shop. I did so many things. I didn't really feel I knew what I wanted to do until I was about 25. And I just say do as much as you possibly can. You'll know right away if you're going to be good at it or not, or if you really love it. If you find something you really love, which is not everybody can do, but if you do, you'll be amazing at it. Yeah, I guarantee. Stick to it, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Sure. Early. This has been great. Yeah. 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 Call me Bob, please. But yes, you're welcome. I enjoyed seeing you guys.